Sometimes people in the Vaishnava world think that if a being is truly divine or an incarnation, avatar, it's going to be just obvious to everyone. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Shankar, um, Shankar Chakra everywhere. No. Like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, right, allegedly born with all the symbols under his feet. Right? According to? Shastra. Which is written by? Uh, Purva Acharya. And when? <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> yes. So if you've been listening attentively, you know the answer to all those questions. <laughs> So he's supposedly born with the, the, the marks of Lord Vishnu or Krishna's feet, right? There's symbols that are traditionally depicted as being... Let's just, can we just caveat this after these sarcastic comments, right? It, it's not that it's not true, right? No, no. If, you, I, if faith is there of a devotee, fantastic. Yes, we right? are not at all denying the truth of this. We are, we are calling out the mentality of people who approach this topic and deal with this topic yeah. more often than not. So this idea that he was born with all these symbols, right? If it was so easily accessible and available, why would he need to preach to anyone? Just lift his foot and show his foot. Give foot darshan to everyone. Like the and everyone can, Bhatta, yeah, when he's yeah. debating and listening to him and stuff. Yeah. And everyone just becomes converted. Um, yeah. The signs are there. Yeah. Where's the doubt? If it's so implicit in Shastra, just show the Shastra and they'll accept. Because it has the name of his parents. It has the place where he's going to be born. It has everything. Yeah. Right? And the point I'm making, therefore, is, is not that the, that the claim is that he's divine is, is bogus. Not at all. I'm saying the idea that the Lord should be so easily recognized, yeah. that is bogus because it's not true even for Krishna. Krishna, the Supreme Lord that every Vaishnava yeah. unanimously accepts as being so, was not recognized as being Bhagav Bhagavan yeah. by everyone around him. Why? Yoga Maya Samavrata, I cover myself. That's it. Yeah. He states it himself in Shastra because I cover myself. So why are we holding any future or other incarnation of the Lord to any different standard. Yeah. So if Krishna himself comes and says, I cover myself to the point where practically when we read, so we has, there's the claim from Krishna and then there's the practical analysis of the various leaders that took place with Krishna in the Bhagavatam, etc. And you see proof of that. You see proof of people not recognizing the Supreme Lord in Krishna, right? Indra, the whole Govardhan Lila is that he looks at that boy and says, what's that boy doing there? Who is he? Even Indra doesn't know. Yeah. Let alone just normal human beings going about that. Well, even Arjuna, in right. until chapter ten, right. should we say? Right? right. So Arjuna, Indra. I mean, the list goes on of great persons, even Brahma to an extent, who who don't recognize the extent of the divinity. That's an interpolation, though. Oh. oh, okay. oh. So you see, so that's going on, and that standard is now being unfairly applied to any claim made thereafter. So, if, for example, I make the claim Guruji is Narayana, he's an avatar. If I make the claim, yeah. then let me just say, well, where's the evidence? It should be in Shastra. It should be this. It should be that. It should be blatantly yeah. obvious. Yeah. And it's like, well, what Shastra have you been reading? What, what, what avatars have you come across that that's just obvious? In the Shingadev, if he appears out of a pillow with a lion head, yeah, yeah. fair enough. Yeah, yeah. But that's not the only standard of avatar that we've ever dealt with. Yeah, the thing is, look, Samarvata Swarupa, the, 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 the hidden Swarupa of the avatar is there. Right, and it, he Krishna makes it very clear. I don't reveal myself to everybody. There it's is a qualification. A, it's adhikar. It's, it's adhikar. There's just his mercy. It just needs to drop, right? And it's not just and 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 let's let also make the point. We're not saying everybody in the whole universe, eight billion people, need to bow down to Swami Vishwananda, and that is your path, and that is what you have. No, not at all. A master comes down, an avatar comes down, and they come down for their souls, for the people that are meant to be with them. He gives them the opportunity, yeah. right? Right? And whether we decide to take it or not is there. And maybe that it's not everybody's opportunity. They have a different dharma, a different purpose, a different trajectory of the soul. Right? We fully acknowledge that. We're not making these absolute exclusivist statements. Right? Certainly Guruji would never subscribe to that kind of stuff. I'll certainly make the invitation though. And, Obviously, and, and, yeah. yeah. And, I'll, and I do that only because it would be a betrayal to myself not to. Because of everything that he's given me and everything that I've experienced with him, I'd like to think that I'm a, um, a grounded person. And, that, and I work on that specifically. I, I'm, I've, I'm quite allergic to ungroundedness. I don't like it. I never have liked it. I don't appreciate it when I, when I see it elsewhere, whether it's in our path or in any other path. Um, and you meet those people in every tradition, including ours. Um, and I think one of the most powerful things I've ever experienced in my life is when you meet people who are grounded, competent, intelligent, and they're able to tell you the truth. And it's a truth that speaks to something you haven't experienced yourself, but it's as much as it's a testimony, it's at the same time an invitation to, would you like to explore? Would you like to to pursue the same experience that I've had? Now, I'm not going to sit here and say that anyone is going to have the same experiences that I've had with Guruji if you do what I've done. Not at all. Because I don't believe that that's, it's reproducible in that way. It's not formulaic. The Lord is the Lord. You are a Jiva and your relationship with him is unique. You're not going to have the exact same experiences of someone else. But they're going to be close enough 
it's going to be similar enough, I would say. And so whenever I speak about my experiences and, you know, as you have said, we've both done this extensively in other, you know, YouTube videos and satsangs and whatever else. There is something there that I'm, I'm, I often feel if you're, if you're not completely shut off to the possibility, you have to explore it. I mean, there's something inside of you that goes, can I really just dismiss this outright? Yeah. Is it responsible? Is it an intelligent thing to do? Is it a rational thing to do to just dismiss this yeah. just because it's not convenient for me or just because it doesn't fit in, in the framework within um, which I'm already in? And I and therefore I, I make this this invitation. It's like, it's not, like you said, we're not wanting everybody to convert or become devotees. Not at all. But there's something worth exploring here. 